Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Power Life TV channel, Power Life TV broadcast. We are restoring families with Pastor Brian. And Pastor Tasha. And here we are going to give you an awesome, awesome message today. It's today's Wednesday. Amen. Wednesday. Wednesday. Hump day. <laughs> <laughs> I like Wednesday. You do? You know I like Wednesday. Ah. You know why I like Wednesday? No. Because it's preaching day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Work day. Yes, I did. Every day is work day <laughs> for me. It really is. Every day is work day for me. But I, I really enjoy the the time that we are uh, spending in the Word in our Bible studies. And so this is fun for me. Mm. This is really fun. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Make sure you watch our broadcast. Invite somebody. It's Restoring Families with Brian and Natasha. We want you to go to our YouTube page. It's Power Life TV channel. We want you to hit on the like button, hit the subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. We'll let you uh, know when we're coming on live. Uh, before we start our broadcast today, I don't, you know, at the time of this recording, um, I want to say uh, our prayers go up for the, for the uh, Damar Hamlin family. Um, it was a young man who plays for the Buffalo Bills, got hit, hit viciously on the football field. And, you know, it was a very, very uh, scary sight. Mm -hmm. And um, we, uh, we pray for that young man. We pray for a speedy recovery for him, pray that he comes out of it. But we also pray for the families and pray for all, all of those football players that have gone through such tragic and traumatic, traumatic things. So uh, our, our prayers go out to them. And uh, we just pray for the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. So uh, we've been dealing with this subject called hearing and being <laughs> heard. Hearing and being heard. What do you think about what we've been talking about? Just talking about communication. So one of the greatest things I think we said, we said it yesterday, that, well, let me back up. Day before, you know, on, on Monday, what we discussed is that one of the most important aspects in communication is hearing. Mm. That you have to hear twice as much as you speak mm -hmm. in order to have good communication. Yeah, that's right. And then yesterday, what we talked about is how... Um, criticism. We talked about criticism, yeah. but we also talked about the most important aspect in positive communication, which is care. Yeah. I think yeah, that yeah. just, yeah. you know, you cannot, that is revolutionary to me because mm -hmm. I think we've never sat down and really thought about what makes, what is the, what is the deal with communication? What is, mm -hmm. what makes communication positive or negative? And it is the heart and the attitude behind any communication, you have to have uh, a caring heart. You have to have a caring attitude. And if you don't, then a lot of our communications are going to be negative or it'll just fall to the area of contempt yeah. or it'll be a comment. Yeah. But it won't have that positive quality that communication should have, which is to transfer power. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, yeah. when you have positive communication, then yeah, you're transferring so power. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have uh, negative or relatively neutral statements, then it doesn't have the power to change an environment. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. You know, the, the thing about uh, transferring power is when God spoke in the beginning to the woman and to the man, uh, well, a lot of us thought that he was just saying to them, you know, let us make a man in our image and our likeness and man be. Right. But, uh, and also in Genesis 126, and let them have dominion, you know. So when we look at that, it's, it, it wasn't so much that he was setting or establishing a standard of communication. He was, like you said, transferring power. Mm -hmm. So which means that it, it at the beginning establishes the order of things. Right. So if he was transferring power, then guess what happens when we speak? Right. We're transferring power. Right. And it could be, you know, power of death or, or the power life. of life, you that's know? True. And so we want to be very mindful on how we communicate. Right. And that's the power of negative communication. Yeah. It's yeah. a destructive quality. Mm -hmm. But it and, also transfers. And it also transfers. Yeah. Yes. But 
you know, the only power that builds is positive. Yeah, that's right. Uh, destructive uh, uh, communication tears down mm -hmm. and destroys. That's right. That's and right. some of us have cut our teeth in destructive that's speech. Right. That's right. <laughs> and so we have to be disciplined in this area of Care, uh, excuse me, communication with care and communication right. with gentleness. So, right. And, uh, well, one of the, and just one more point. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking this morning about what is the cure for human nature. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. human nature has a tendency to go toward the negative. Yeah. Uh, the the Bible says, "From the ground you came, from the dust you came, into the dust you shall return." Mm -hmm. And we know that the ground was cursed. Yeah. In other words, the ground was given the power to fail. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the beginning, it only had the power to prosper. Right. So with that death quality and that destructive quality being part of the dust that we are, very, the very dust that we're made of, mm -hmm. we know that we have to overcome that nature. Mm -hmm. And the only cure for that is the resurrection power of, of Christ. Jesus. That's right. That's so good. Yeah. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, I want to get started with the scripture today. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is out of uh, Proverbs, hmm. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to look at 1 and 2 in the Amplified Classic, just to set a stand, set okay. stage for where yes. we're going. He says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of, that's what you were just talking about. He says, the tongue of the wise utters knowledge rightly, but the mouth of the self-confident fool Pours out folly. Now we know what is a fool. Uh, the Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God. There is no God. But it's interesting. It says a fool says in his heart. Right. So he doesn't necessarily have to say it with his mouth. Mm, Think that's about that. interesting. Think about that. You're right. You know, with the mouth we can say yes to oh, God. Oh yes, I believe. I, I believe. believe. But with the heart, you could be far from Him. Jesus made that statement. He wow. said, "He said, you know, you, you, you know, you, you, you tithe of the mint and the cumin, and you, you do all of the outward things, but your heart is far from me. You mm -hmm. forgot about the weightier matters, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so we have to realize that a fool says in his heart, there is no God. And when you're speaking like a self-confident person, mm -hmm. you made this on your own. You did this. I, I'm this way." You know, you fight against the very knowledge of Christ. Very true. You fight against the very knowledge of what God has said about you. You know, what has he said in his word? Yeah. You constantly call yourself sick. Well, God says you're healed, mm -hmm. you know, so that's a self-confident food. That's mm -hmm. saying in your heart, there is no God. Yes. Now, the uh, next verse in verse three says this, the eyes of the Lord are every place, keeping watch upon the evil and the good. And you said this yesterday. This is accountability. That's accountability. That's exactly right. So if you know that the, the, the Lord is not only, the Bible says this, that he watches over his word to perform mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. But we never think that he's watching over our words. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He's, he, we don't think that he's paying attention to what we're saying. Mm -hmm. But as mm. the king's kids, as wow. God's children, he said in his words, you will decree a thing mm -hmm. and it will be established mm -hmm. unto you. Mm -hmm. So when you go around criticizing and complaining, you know, you are prophesying your own future. Wow. When you call your kids and, and you say, you know, you're not going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised when they don't go far in life. Or just calling them bad. Mm. He's so bad. You know, she's so bad. Well, why would you say that? Right. What prompted you to say? You have to think about yeah. what prompts you to say the things that come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And and why are you saying that? Are you saying that to be funny? Funny, or to put and to impress others? Or to know? or to put down the actions of the child as something that shouldn't be paid attention to? Right. Right. You know. So we have to be very mindful of what we're saying. Now, verse four says this: a gentle tongue, and I love this, with this healing power. A gentle tongue with this healing power mm -hmm. is a tree of life but willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit mm -hmm. so when you when you're willfully contrary you're breaking down the spirit of a person it, you know uh and i think you mentioned yesterday what willful contrariness means mm -hmm. to be contrary you know to, right. to it, be oppositional right so willful that means my own will yeah <clears throat> to willfully or on purpose be 
oppositional. Mm -hmm. In other words, I am sowing seeds of contempt mm -hmm. with my tongue. Mm -hmm. If you say right, I say left. Mm -hmm. If you say up, I say down. I always have a contrary comeback to any statement mm. you make. Wow. So now wow. we're getting wow, wow, wow. into really one of the main themes of what we're talking about today, which is the spirit of contempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Contempt. Yeah. Very often people will make statements from a moral position of superiority. In mm -hmm. other words, I think I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it. I'm not saying things to be uplifting to you. Mm -hmm. When I make statements, I'm being uplifting to me. Yeah. This is contemptuous statements. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's I want I want to kind of go back over what we did yesterday, if you don't mind. I, you know, yesterday we started off talking about criticism. Now, remember, this is the four most corrosive negative communication behavior patterns. We call them the four horsemen. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we talked about criticism, and we gave. The definition of criticism right and we gave the antidote of criticism and we asked you yesterday to take notes so we'd like for you to get that same notebook that you had or get your notepad or even take notes on your phone and and write these things down that we're talking about today because it's going to help you today we're going to look at what's the next one so uh the next one is contempt contempt okay uh, so yesterday we talked about criticism, which is, you know, verbally attacking a person's character. We don't often think when we're criticizing that that's what we're doing, but mm -hmm. that's basically what we're doing mm -hmm. when we're criticizing. Yeah. And we found that one of the, um, the best antidotes, especially if you have a partner or a person in your life who is typically critical, that the best thing to do when they're being critical is to not escalate mm -hmm. uh, this behavior by joining in the party mm -hmm. uh, yeah. or being defensive. Mm -hmm. That's not going to help. Mm -hmm. The best thing we could do is have what's called a gentle, gentle startup. startup. Yeah. And you so might say, good. well, what's a gentle startup? Well, that's when you say, uh, pretty much you're using words that have to do that say talk about yourself mm -hmm. and not in a gloating kind of a way, but you're saying, I feel and I think yeah. it's never a crime to talk about how you might feel mm -hmm. and when somebody's being critical or criticizing you uh, you want to make statements that that express a positive need mm -hmm. and express a positive want and mm -hmm. you're talking about your feelings you know yeah. so you I, yeah. I think mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. I, you know I feel tired from work um, um, could you help me yeah. in this area? Mm -hmm. You know, those are those are positive things that will not escalate mm -hmm. that need in the other person or that desire to criticize. Well, you know, another one is, and, and a lot of arguments uh, stem from trauma triggers. Mm. You know, so true. And uh, a lot of us are not honest enough to say, "Hey, I'm feeling anxious over the situation." You know, we're about to go over to this person's house and, uh, you know, I never have good vibes when I go over there. I, I don't think they treat me right. And so I'm feeling a little bit anxious about this. Mm -hmm. and I, it, that's not an attack on the next person by you saying what you feel. Yeah, I feel nervous. Yeah. Well, a lot of people will take it as an attack sometimes. You right. Know? Well, if you start criticizing that person, yeah, yeah. especially if it's a person that you love yeah. and, and you say and you start saying things about that person then you might feel yeah. you know like wait a minute you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. that's my buddy you mm -hmm. don't talk that way about my buddy right. but if you say well, I feel nervous every time I go over there now you're not talking about the buddy yeah. now mm -hmm. you're talking mm -hmm. about yourself that's right yeah and this is not because somebody can look at us and say well that's being selfish no it's not it's, it's taking the accusation sting out of the conversation. Certainly. It's is. removing that thorn in the side, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, take, it's bringing the, uh, I, I say, the, the, the intensity rate down. Mm -hmm. You know, because the moment you start pointing and going, you always are right. uh, accusing, excuse me, it raises that intensity level. It certainly does. And a person is going to meet you at your level of intensity. Ooh, yes. And so bringing it down, start gentle. And, and and speak on how you feel. How you feel. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this, but we're we're not gonna come from a place of pointing fingers. So good. We're not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna cause you to be more upset, you know, behind how you feel about, you know, about my 
personality or my character. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take it from a different angle and say, hey, you know, I feel nervous every time we... Yeah, we do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and now I'm just talking about how I feel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so today we're talking about another one of the four most corrosive and negative behavior patterns. Mm -hmm. And this, this one is a big one because this one is very much indicative of divorce. Yeah. When you find a couple who are contemptuous, mm -hmm. uh, you can, you know, it's one of the, the most corrosive and destructive behavior mm -hmm. patterns in any relationship. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, now, I, for, just for the audience's sake, I could, because I know you and I have studied these things, but what is contempt? You know, mm -hmm. what, is a real, what is the real definition of contempt? And maybe you can give us, you know, a, a synopsis of what it is. Well, you know, contempt is to make, uh, to make a statement from a position of moral superiority. Mm. So basically, uh, one of the things that uh, you find in a contemptuous person is sarcasm. Mm, okay, okay. Or, or bad jokes. Mm -hmm. When I say bad jokes, I'm talking about... Uh, jokes that use humor to put another person down, mm -hmm. name calling. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this before that yeah. during uh, one of the world wars, they called the opposing side cockroaches. Yeah, that's right. Well, the reason that you call them a cockroach is because you're dehumanizing mm -hmm. them and you're saying that morally you're superior yeah, to yeah. a cockroach. And so therefore, it's so easy to destroy a bug. It's mm -hmm. not so mm -hmm. easy to murder a person. Yeah. You know? Wow, yeah. So I call them a dog or something like if that. If you're calling yeah. them a dog, you're yeah. calling them outside of their name. Yeah. Those are statements of contempt. Mm -hmm. Hostile humor. Yeah. Any of that hostile humor stuff, yeah. that's contempt. Yeah. We kind of yeah. talked about that yesterday as well. But another thing that I see in this uh, word contempt is the word cynicism. Being a cynic. You know, oh, uh, yeah. or being cynical. Or how about this? Mockery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible talks about mockery in yeah. several places. And when you can mock a person, you're already putting them down yeah. by saying that you're bigger than them. Mm -hmm. You're making fun of something that is uh, part of who they are. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. mockery. And that's a, a, a contemptuous type of behavior. I want to go back to that word cynicism because a lot of people, when they think of cynicism, they think of, well, they just don't like anything. But really, mm. I believe a cynic, uh, a, a cynical person doesn't see the good in anything. Right. Everything is on a negative spin. You know, everything. Debbie Downer. Yeah, Debbie Downer. <laughs> or every party has a pooper. And, you know, and so when you look at a, a person who's very cynical, you can tell the root of that cynicism is hurt, mm -hmm. contempt, you know. Uh, a lot of them have received a lot of uh, bad things, bad words spoken over them. And so now their, their whole life, their perspective in life mm -hmm. is nothing good ever happens to me. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met anybody like that? They, oh, yeah. So they're very contemptuous because they feel like Nothing good ever happens to well, me. Well, I think or... we've all met people like that. And, you know, even talking about it, I think, you know, you just feel kind of icky talking about mm -hmm. it. I mean, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you can just think of, you yeah. know, being around people who don't exactly make you feel joyful. That's and, right. You know, right. yeah. full of laughter. They just really kind of suck the energy out of the room. Mm -hmm. And even thinking about it, it kind of, it's like, you know, I'm kind of checking my own self right mm. now. Like, oh, I feel bad just talking about it. Yeah, yeah. But, you, you know, know but, but the thing about this is that, you, yes, you know, no person will be successful unless they have self-evaluation or mm -hmm. self-examination. You know, David right. says, search my heart, oh God. Right. See if there be any wicked way in me. Mm -hmm. Try my thoughts, you know. Right. And, and, and lead me in the path of everlasting. Because mm. what David wanted was self-examination. He didn't want to go out there creating situations. Right. He negative wanted, situations. And you mentioned just yesterday the prayer of Jabez. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How Jabez had a name and his uh, name meant that. Sorrow. Sorrow. Mm -hmm. That he brings sorrow everywhere he goes. And he said, you know, I don't want to be called sorrow. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> and so yeah. he went to the Lord and he said, why do my tent stakes mm -hmm. cause my uh, influence 
to increase. Right. Let me be a positive influence to all who are around mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. And so God granted his request. Yeah. And so you might say, well, how do I know if I'm more contemptuous than positive? Well, uh, one of the things that we learned from Dr. Grotman is it, what he called a 5-1 ratio. Okay. In other words, for every, every, um, for every five positive uh, comments, uh, there could be one complaint, mm. so to speak. Uh, that's how you balance, so to speak, mm. your comments. In other words, you should have more positive things to say then the negative, negative and wow. you know everybody has a right to complain mm -hmm, from mm -hmm, time to time mm -hmm. but if your complaints are outweighing your positive speech then you are in a destructive pattern mm -hmm. and so you need to fill up your positive speech bank mm -hmm, so to speak mm -hmm. and now we're talking about that's good. reversing your dysfunctional that's behavior good. that's good what well, you know sometimes we are victims of our own training mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we've been trained yep. in the area of contempt. Mm -hmm. And so if you've been trained in the area of contempt and you say, like Jabez said, I don't want to be like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have to uh, make regular deposits into your emotional bank. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to make regular positive statements. And now I'm not talking about making phony statements yeah. here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on. False statements. But when you start making positive statements and you're in the habit of making critical or contemptuous statements, mm -hmm. it's going to sound phony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's That's not right. because the statements are phony. It's because you're so on the side of negativity that it doesn't feel natural right. to make right. Come on. positive statements. That's so good. That's all it is. You know, uh, the Bible talks about, and I believe it's uh, out of uh, Matthew 13, I thought it was, uh -huh. out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right. Um, and I'm trying to find it here. Mm -hmm. um, but it is in, yeah, it's Matthew 12 and 34. It talks about here, a good man out of the good treasure. This is Matthew 12, 35. A mm -hmm. good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth. Mm. So whatever you have spent time depositing, depositing. in your heart. That's what's going to come that's out. That's what's going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> and so you just said, and I love what you just said, spend more uh, deposit time putting positive things in. Right. So if You that, should have more things on the positive side of your emotional bank. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so good. That's so you know, yeah. that doesn't mean you never have anything to complain about ever, because mm -hmm. there are some things, yeah. you know, in life that'll happen. And there is a time to say, you know, y'all, we have to we have to stop this. You can't leave your shoes in the middle of the floor every single day. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. you can't do that. So there is a time to complain, you know, mm -hmm. in Ecclesiastes, it talked about having times for doing yeah, certain, certain things. things. Yeah, that's right. Well, our time is running out and I want to hear the antidote to contempt. So a contemptuous statement would be, you forgot to load the dishwasher again. Mm -hmm. You know, can you imagine the person rolling their eyes mm -hmm. and saying, oh, you're so lazy. That's contempt. That's contempt. Yeah. <laughs> And so what is the antidote? Or so, what would be a better way to make that statement? So so uh, another way of saying that is I understand that you've been busy lately. Right. You know, understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, but could you please remember to load the dishwasher when I work late? I would really appreciate it. So mm -hmm. now you're dealing with, again, going back mm -hmm. to the criticism, making I statements. I statements. Yeah. And then also recognizing that one person is not better than the other. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't have the right to call you lazy mm -hmm. unless I think that I work harder than you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, most people, you know, if you haven't loaded the dishwasher, it's probably not because you're lazy, which, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably because you didn't have the time or you didn't have the energy to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so this is a call understanding. Mm -hmm. And when, when that person asked the question, could you do this? Mm -hmm. You know, it also denoted respect. And appreciation. And appreciation. Yeah. I, I would really appreciate yeah. it yeah. if you could help me. Yeah. So uh, to, to sum it all up, an antidote is to build a culture of appreciation. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we've done that. Yeah. In our relationship. That's so good. Yeah, that's true. In our relationship. That is so you true. know, one of the things you, you do, I never have to ask, you know, could you put the garbage out? Mm -hmm. Because you just do it. And, you know, you just sow those seeds into our family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and it's something that I often express appreciation for. Mm -hmm. I really gained an appreciation for it at a time that you were not there to pull the garbage yeah, out. Yeah. And I had to pull it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> for the first time. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you, Lord. I don't have to do this. Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so it really developed a huge appreciation on the inside of me for something that you do on a regular basis. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's not hard for me to say, ooh, thank you so much, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, and we, we love to feel appreciated, mm -hmm. um, especially men, you know, I'm speaking from a man's POV. We love to feel respected, honored, and appreciated, mm -hmm. you know? It does something to our ego, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I love this word, and we're gonna close with this and write it down. The antidote to <coughs> contempt. Oh, I'm sorry. You okay? <laughs> the antidote to contempt is build a culture of appreciation. Um, remind yourself of your partner's positive qualities and find gratitude for those positive actions right you don't have to dwell on a person's negative qualities mm -hmm. uh, you never have to remind a person of the things that they do wrong yeah, they come probably on. already really know, know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you say you know what so i good. love it when you do this mm -hmm. you you really made my day thank you so much you know you're the best thing that ever happened to me yeah those are things that build a culture of appreciation and you'll find that whatever seeds you sow mm -hmm. into that emotional bank you'll get it back yeah you know you're gonna good be a, yeah. oh yes good measure press down shaking together and running over it'll come back to you maybe not immediately but it'll it will come back in waves mm -hmm. so you good. know yeah so I just want to kind of uh, recap here so we're talking about four most corrosive negative communication behavior patterns <laughs> and the first one was criticism so we dealt with criticism and then Today, we're talking about contempt. Uh, I really believe this helped you. This blessed you, uh, especially setting the culture. And that's why I love this church, our church, you know. Mm -hmm. And I say I say this with all confidence and boldness, our church, you mm -hmm. know. Because God has helped us shape a culture in our in our community, in our, in our church, of loving people a lot. Yeah. Appreciating one another, not tearing down one another. Um, I love it when we all come together and we are speaking nice over each other, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't like the phoniness, and I know we don't see much of that in our church, you know? No, it, I it, mean, even you know. even our daughters were saying, wow, you know, it, we really have a good congregation. congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, and just stating how good they feel about the people and how confident they feel mm -hmm. and, you know, people's development, spiritual growth. And yeah. to me, that says a lot when your children think that, Children will always tell the truth. That's right. That's right. They sure will. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when they say, yeah, I feel a sense of family. I feel a genuine sense of love. That just says a lot right there. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, uh, we're going to close right there, but we want to give you an opportunity to sow. I believe that this message touched your life. And if you would just sow into a message like this, you know, you say, I wish I could change. I wish I could do that. I wish I could be this kind of way. Uh, I just don't see a way. Sow a seed to meet a need. Yes, and we, we just want to thank, you know, everyone who has partnered with us. Yeah, you on. know, those who are helping us to put out these programs. Uh, you know, even the encouragement, the, yeah. the encouraging words, the comments that you make on mm -hmm. our program. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the positive seeds you've sown into this message. Amen. Amen. Let us bless you today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The, the Lord, Lord make his face shine upon you and, and be gracious to you. The, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We, we declare shalom and blessings over your life. And we declare that Jesus is Lord and he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you. And we'll see you next time. Amen. Amen.